Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming today. It's a pleasure to be here, and what a beautiful setting to be in. Um, I think, uh oh, <laughs> it's okay. Good start. Hello? Yeah, it's working? Okay. So I've thought a lot about what I wanted to say here today and the message that I want to share. I'm here to talk about the true impact of an ACL injury. Well, I thought I could do that by explaining why I'm here today. The biggest thing this ACL injury has given me is the opportunity to slow down, to assess, to sit still and think about the world and my contribution to it. I'm here today because I'm privileged. Some weeks, my biggest concern is whether we will win a game or not. I'm privileged not to be one of the hundreds of millions of people who are on the front lines of suffering in this world. I flew here today. In the climate and ecological emergency, I flew here because I believe that the people here and the people listening to this have the power to change the world. In fact, I know they do because I've seen for myself how women's football and indeed women everywhere are changing the world for the better. There are many activists within, women's, within football that have contributed so much of themselves to the women's game, and I just want to take this opportunity to acknowledge them and to thank them. Because now we're at a crossroads in the game. The opportunity is there to grow like never before. I just pray that whoever is in charge of making decisions always considers at what cost. We've seen for ourselves time and time again how chasing linear growth can destroy precious ecosystems. There are many precious ecosystems in this world, and I'm telling you now, women's football is definitely one of them. But I'm not sure how much you know about precious ecosystems, but more often than not, they're sold for less than they're worth. They get mined, stripped apart, sucked dry, becoming a shell of what they once were, only for the benefit of a few. Women's football is a space in society that we have fought for for generations. So many of us, football is so much more than just a game. Football gives us a way to speak directly to power. But right now, more than anything, as a collective, football gives us power. Power to make decisions that have far and wide consequences for the world as we know it. And I'm so grateful that there are so many brilliant people in the world of football that just want the best for the future. I just ask that you consider everyone's future and not just the games. Did you know that there are top women's leagues sponsored by some of the biggest investors in fossil fuels globally? These investments directly result in the dredging and destruction of precious ecosystems. Within these, communities, villages, women who can't bathe their children in the waters anymore because they're toxic, poisoned by the chemicals flowing down the rivers from mines or oil wells. Tribes who can't feed their people anymore because the nature they have depended on for thousands of years is being destroyed all around them. Funded by the companies that we wear proudly as sponsors of our game. Wildfires and record rainfall devastated this country, Greece, for the last two months, first scorching entire forests and flooding complete towns. Storm Daniel just last month became one of the most fierce storms Greece has ever seen. It's hard to believe looking outside today, but it swept houses off their foundations with rainfall that lasted three days and claimed at least 17 lives. Homes, roads were destroyed, bridges collapsed, and fertile crops in Western Greece, known as the country's breadbasket, were completely wiped out. In rural towns like Koskinos and Palamas, which were some of the worst hit areas just 200 miles from here, walls were ripped off homes and cars covered in thick sludge. Many farmers have lost their entire life's work. The Greek Prime Minister has said that the country has faced an unprecedented weather event, a catastrophe of immense proportions. As long as we keep burning fossil fuels, we will see more and more of these extremes. At Champions for Earth, a collective I'm a part of, we're athletes past and present who are passionate about using our platforms to inspire and empower others to do the same, to speak up for a safe, just, and healthy future. And women's football, all of us, united, have a powerful part that we can play in this match. 
because of all the things that we strive for, whether that be diversity, inclusion, investment, equality and representation, all of it is futile without clean air to breathe and fresh water to drink. We all have a responsibility to do our bit, and when we multiply it by doing it as a collective, we change the world. Just look at that World Cup we had. We all knew it would change the world. The inspiration we saw on the pitch and the courage that was displayed off it. I think it was felt within everyone who tuned into that tournament. It also highlighted huge discrepancies, not just between the men's and women's game, but also within the women's game itself. And where most thought it would be the difference in quality of the players that was on show, instead we soon discovered it was the lack of resources, investment and respect that was mostly on show. I had hoped to be there, to step on the pitch and play my part in a home World Cup. Let me take you back to a warm day in April earlier this year. I met with the New Zealand assistant coach in person that day. They came and said to me that the opportunity was there. I just had to go and show them that I deserved a spot on the team. I hadn't been involved in the squad for a while. I was starting to think that it might not be possible, but this conversation reignited that flame and gave me new hope that it was in my hands. Later that day, we played Celtic. And in the 85th minute, in a missed time maneuver, in a micro moment, a lifelong dream completely ruptured in my knee. My instinct was to scream, to cry, to yell, to let out the frustration and the fear. It was anger and grief. My knee was wrecked. I was sure of that. But I paused for a moment and I took a breath. I realized I wasn't actually in pain, just a kind of strange, spacious sensation. It's hard to describe. But okay, I thought, maybe I'm just catastrophizing. Maybe it's not so bad and maybe I just got a fright. I stood up and walked off the pitch. The tears knocked, but I didn't let them in. I wasn't ready to accept the truth. The day I was due to fly back to New Zealand for the pre-World Cup training camp was the day that I had my surgery. In the weeks that followed the announcement I'd suffered an ACL rupture, the thing that blew me away most was the outpouring of support and solidarity I received from the footballing community. But what shook me was a question that came up time and time again. Is the club taking care of you? I actually did my ACL on the same day as Leah Williamson. It's my little claim to fame. <laughs> not, a, not, not an ideal one, I know, but... <laughs> I saw the mechanism that her knee did, and I knew I'd done the same thing. So when it was her, announced that it was her ACL, I knew that that was the case for me too. I thought perhaps I could track my recovery progress against hers, but I should have known that not all rehab programs are created equally. See, football has given me a unique lens at which I see the world. I've lived in different countries and experienced a range of different leagues. From the WSL with Lincoln Ladies in 2012, to winning the Serie A with Itali in Italy with Juventus. I played in the WSL again, six years on from the original time with Bristol City, before finding home in the hills of Lewis, playing championship football each week for a community-owned club. I went on to experience what it was like to play in the National League for a club with a Premier League men's side, and I've spent a, a season in the Scottish Premier League. It's only in recent times that this topic has been on everyone's lips. I'd heard it being asked and discussed, but I hadn't given it much thought. That is, until I started being asked it directly. After my injury and following the spate of high-profile athletes in the game doing their ACLs, so many people have asked me, why do I think it is that there are so many ACL ruptures in the women's game? And I've been thinking a lot about the different environments I've been in and the challenges I've faced within them. The biggest changes I've seen in my, football, in my time as a footballer is how the expectations on players at any competitive level are that of a professional. Think about the fixtures, the training load, the commitment expected of players to be continuously at the highest level, but the support is simply not there for the players who need it the most. When I came to England to play in the WSL, I looked down on the championship players. Given the standard has improved a lot since then, but knowing what I know now, I have the utmost respect for the players who go above and beyond for their team, their coach, their club, when they get such little support in the process. The game has grown rapidly and clubs are desperately trying to keep up, but it's not cheap. 
And when all the funds go towards travel costs, accommodations, pitch hire, et cetera, et cetera, it's the players that suffer the most. How many times have I seen inexperienced and freshly qualified physios way out of their depth? How many times have I seen or even been a player having to fight for my expenses just so I can keep going to training? How many times have I seen players getting injured and not having the club support them through it? I've seen clubs having to mat manage medical budgets, so depending on who you are and at what time in the season you get injured will depend on the level of care that you receive. I've seen players working full-time jobs, giving up evenings and weekends for next to nothing in return. Players who have to travel across the country to play a Wednesday night fixture, getting home at 1 or 2 a.m. and then getting up early to go to work the next day. The game is going quickly and it's so incredible to celebrate those at the top of the pyramid doing amazing things. But my fear is that we're trying to fly before we've even grown our feathers. We need investment and support to support the infrastructure throughout the different tiers of the game and not just the top. The quality in the leagues, like the championship, will improve exponentially when the players are supported adequately on and off the pitch. There's so much depth in the women's game and giving these players an opportunity to be their best on the pitch will also give them the confidence to be their best off it too. The gap between the leagues and the teams isn't a talent gap. It's a financial one. But we're not talking about millions here, like in the men's game. A small amount of money can go such a long way for these players. These are players whose stories don't get told. The players who don't get free boots and kit sponsors the players who drive hours to get to training, the players who don't have adequate recovery time or facilities, the players who smile and interact with fans after a tough match, and the players who don't have access to a decent gym or an experienced sports scientist or strength and conditioning coach. The players that give their entire weeks to play for a club who don't pay them adequately. These are the players that are holding the women's game together, and I'm here to tell you that these players are tired because they're not only dealing with all of this, but it's emotionally taxing too. These players, sorry. <laughs> These players also have to support the rest of their team because they know they've been there before and they know that the team is struggling and the adequate support isn't available for the young players coming through. So I don't know what the exact recipe is for this kind of injury, but I'm pretty sure that a few of the ingredients can be found in these examples. Players shouldn't have to worry about whether they'll be supported if they get injured. They should be able to play the game without fear and know that they can come back stronger with the support of their club and their community. So what my ACL injury has given me is perspective. Some people say that things happen for a reason. That being said, I don't know why I ruptured my ACL, but maybe it was so that I could come here today and speak to you. Thank you.